What's going on you guys? Thank you so much for joining me back on my YouTube channel. I really do appreciate it. Today I'm going to be talking about if the Nissan 350Z is actually going to be a good car for you to own kind of like long term. I've had this car for about a year and two months now. So I feel like I'm pretty qualified to like let you guys know if it's going to be a good car you're going to want to own for like, you know, a pretty solid amount of time. Obviously it depends on what you're going to be doing with the car. Like if you plan to drift it or if you plan to track it. Obviously this is not really going to apply. But if you do plan to daily the car like me, like I go to school and stuff like that. Or not lately because of the coronavirus, but you know what I mean. Go get groceries, just run normal errands around town and stuff are you gonna be able to get by with a Nissan 350z I daily this thing every single day and I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on three major points that I've been thinking about now that I've owned this car for a little bit and those three points are if the power sitting at around a 300 horsepower is you know kind of lackluster at this point like if I'm craving more horsepower another point I wanted to talk about was gonna be uh, the fact that the car is a two-seater and the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about was like what the pricing is doing with the 350z um, I owned a Genesis coupe a 2013 for about three years before this and I sold it in 2016 bought it for 22,000 ended up selling it for like 12.5 or something so I literally lost like half the value of that car in three years that I owned it so in the year and a half ish that I've owned this car how has the price held up or gone down I'm gonna be going over that as well anyways let's get into it the very first thing I wanted to talk about is the power so how has the power been honestly I just drove this car here I'm in a random park in the middle of wine country in Temecula honestly there's some canyon roads on the way and this car every time I get in it and drive it puts a huge smile on my face even a year and a half later obviously I always think about you know what it would be like with a turbo or a supercharger on it which i'm always looking at online but honestly for the horsepower numbers how much i spent on this car and like how reliable it's been for me honestly the horsepower is amazing like you guys know i have a miata as well now that thing has like 98 horsepower or something i mean it feels like it's three times faster than that miata it's probably only two times faster than that miata but you know it feels really fast compared to the miata so i don't think the horsepower numbers have really become like lackluster in my opinion it gets the job done and i don't have to worry too much that i'm gonna get a speeding ticket every time i leave the house it's like right on the cusp of like honestly perfect daily driving horsepower in my opinion like right around 300 horsepower i would say if it had maybe 50 more horsepower we'd be talking but you know i'm not too picky so anyways that's how i feel about the horsepower let me know if you guys own this car if you guys feel the same way so the second point i wanted to talk about was the two-seater aspect of the car obviously there's only one other seat in here besides me my friends are always having to like rock paper scissors when we go to car shows i went on a long road trip the other day up to morro bay there's a vlog if you guys haven't seen that i'll go check it out i brought my brother but i had my two other best friends could not come because obviously we only have one other seat so it does stink i always offer to drive when me and my friends want to go places just because i know i can't and it's hilarious because they're always like bro you can't drive us but you know it is kind of funny but honestly this is kind of a secret between you and me four months ago before i started making youtube videos again i was looking every day for like lancer evos i wanted so bad like an evo 7 or an evo 8 or an evo 9 or something like that but they're so expensive you guys like geez i cannot believe it and they're just going up in value so it's kind of like i gotta buy one soon or they're just going to be out of feasible price range so you know you know what i mean anyways anyways i was looking at a lancer evo because they have four doors and an extra row of seats and like having two best friends and my brother all the time it's like that would be insane obviously i've been able to make it through with just another seat no problem that's pretty much my only big complaint with this car all right so the last thing i wanted to talk about is where's the price gone i've never really talked about pricing on this channel i haven't really i don't think i've actually ever told you guys what i paid for this 350z i paid 7500 it had 60k miles which i thought was a pretty good deal to be honest with you guys i spent so long looking for 350z's online and there were so many with over 130k miles for around 5k that when i found this one for about 7500 with literally half the miles i just couldn't miss the opportunity anyways the pricing has actually gone like nowhere if anything they've gone up in value the weird thing is with the whole coronavirus thing i was actually talking to a used car dealership the other day and they were saying that used cars at the auction are going right now for what they would normally try and resell them for so they're saying with the whole coronavirus thing used car prices have just shot through the roof for some odd reason and just over the year that i've owned this car it seems like 350z's have gone up like on average like i mean i'd say like a thousand dollars before you could easily find one for like 3500 4500 for one with like 150k miles on it like an 03 or an 04 but now even like an 03 or an 04 with like 140k miles on it they're like 5500 so it's if you guys have been thinking about getting a nissan 350z i would highly get one they seem to be going up in value i don't know how much they're going to go up in value really clean stock examples where people haven't just completely destroyed them like all the stock things inside the car are in good condition like a good condition example is so hard to find if you can find one that hasn't been beat up it's been well maintained the body panels are straight there's no dings the paint has been well maintained 
clean. The interior, that's a huge thing, honestly. Really, the outsides of these cars hold up pretty well. I mean, you might have a little bit of clear coat peeling, but the insides of these cars are where the damage really happens. So, you know, if you do find a 350Z with like little to no interior chipping, you know, they're gonna be pretty hard to find here in the coming years. So I would definitely hold on to it if you have one. It's definitely an investment at this point. If you own a drift missile 350Z and there's just no saving it, and you know, it has all kinds of crazy mods, just enjoy the crap out of that thing. Just drive it to the absolute wheels fall off. Love that thing, love what it was meant for. These cars are meant to be driven and enjoyed. So no matter what condition your 350Z is in, there's always gonna be a way it can put a huge smile on your face. All right, you guys, that's basically gonna be it. Thank you so much for joining me on this YouTube video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down below in the comment section. I'll reply to everybody. And also don't forget to drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I would love for you to join the family. We just hit a thousand subscribers. And I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys so much for joining me again on this YouTube video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.